Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me. This video is going to be a lot of fun. It's actually been a long time in the making and I had a member of mine reach out to me and ask me a question and I said, yeah, I've been thinking about putting this thing together for a while now, so maybe we'll go ahead and do it. So this is going to be all about the art of ball switching and what exactly that means. We got a lot of things to talk about. Going to be a fun video. Make sure you watch the whole thing. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. We're working our way to 4,000 on the channel. And if you see here, 86% of the people who watch the Inbringer video had not subscribed to the channel. So go ahead and click that button for me and stick around for more content. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we've all seen it before where somebody is getting ready to take their initial shot. Now we're talking about straight off the tee, whether that be on a par four, a par five, or a par three. We've seen it before. Somebody's setting up their shot, they go and they switch to a new ball right in the middle of their setup. And so why do we do that? So we have a lot of different reasons to explain why exactly somebody would do that. And you have a lot of different streamers and people that make notes out there that will put these kind of things in their setup. So let's look exactly why we go about doing what we do. So the number one reason that I have here is it's all about getting a consistent landing spot. Now we can use a lot of different variations of balls, but when you think about what the power of balls does, to our landing spot. If we wanna land a ball, say at power five minimum, we can set up our shot with a power five ball and we always know at that exact spot, we're gonna be at power five minimum, even if we're not gonna use a power ball. And we're gonna look at some examples in a minute. The second reason we might do this is for spin consistency. There's a lot of balls that only have one side spin, but maybe we need to use a ball with two side spin but we only want to have one side spin on the ball. We can set up our shot with a side spin one ball, then make sure that we have one side spin on it, and then switch to a ball that has two side spin on it, and we don't have to worry about did we actually get one bar of side spin or did we get 1.1 or something crazy like that. So being able to switch our balls around can help us with the side spin. We just have to make sure that the ball that we are going to switch to has the same side spin capabilities as the ball that we switched from. We can also use this technique to help us with overpower and I'm going to show you some examples of what this looks like but actually if we switch to a power four or a power five ball and we apply max overpower we might have a slower needle than we would if we were using a power one or a power two ball I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then there's always the capability of saving a ball every now and then. We're going to look at some examples of this as well. But let's say we only have one or two power zero wind five balls. But sometimes the power one wind five ball has the same capabilities, but we may need to set up our shot with that power zero ball. And then we're able to switch to the power one ball. So we can save on our balls. And I do that all the time whenever I'm playing my rounds because I like to save those power zero wind five balls until I really need it. But I have a lot of power one wind five balls that I can use on my shots. So that comes in handy. And then there's a bonus tip and we see this a lot. So we can actually set up our shot with one club and switch to a completely different club with some better capabilities. And that's again, all about the consistency of your landing spot. So we're gonna look at all kinds of examples of what these things actually look like when you're out there playing. And remember, you only get to use this technique off the tee. So we're talking about a par four, a par five, or a par three in tournament play. But when you're talking about tour play, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily irrelevant but it's not gonna help you out as much in tour play as it is gonna be in tournaments. So let's take a look at what this looks like. And again, I'm not really worried about this for tour play. It's more about tournaments. We're just gonna load up some beginner games here. And I'm gonna play around with the landing spots and with the different clubs and show you all these techniques in action and how you can further implement them in your tournament preparation. So here, we have a power three kingmaker. 
let's say we always want to make sure that we line up this shot with the white line up against the rough. So we line up our shot here. Now we've got a headwind on this. So we can actually here now set our spin. And then we can swap our ball over to a power five ball. Now we know we've always got that consistent landing spot. We can set up in the same spot every single time. Whereas with the berserker ball, we may not know. Then we can go ahead and whatever we need to adjust, we can actually pull these rings and we don't have to worry about now overpowering our shot. So we've got plenty of room to make our adjustment wherever we need to go. And we don't have to worry about whether or not we have to pull into overpower and hit a full overpower shot. Let's take a look at another example here. Let's just say on this par three, we know that we're gonna hit our final shot with the power one wind five ball. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. And the reason that we select it, even though we know we're gonna do some switching of our balls is that when that screen loads, we're gonna get our final wind that we know we need to adjust for. So here on this next shot, we're gonna pretend like it's a par three. We're gonna set up with a power five ball. And then we're gonna make an adjustment back into the range of this power one ball. And then we're gonna take our shot. But the key is with that power five ball, we know we're gonna be able to aim at power five minimum distance and then be able to switch to the power one ball where we can make a backwards adjustment as if it was tailwind. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So again, going to pretend like this is a par three just for this example. We've got a 0.9 wind here, but just pretend it's whatever wind that you would normally see. That's with our wind five ball. So we want to aim. We want to aim down here at power five minimum distance. Let's just say we want to have the white ring on the rough. So we're going to go white ring on the rough. Now we can't adjust backwards here because we're already at minimum distance. But what can we do is swap to that power one ball. Now from here, we're not at minimum distance. We can make a backwards adjustment, but that landing spot is always gonna be the exact same every single time, because we know where power five minimum is. So you use this in tournament play to really get your initial aiming spot down, and then you can switch around whatever ball you wanna play the hole with from there. And so I'm using a lot of different examples here, ranging from berserker balls to kingmakers to wind five balls, things like that. But keep in mind, really what you're talking about is the spin and the power of the ball. We are all given from the very beginning a ball with power zero. So the basic ball can come in handy whenever we're looking to aim our initial shot at either power zero maximum or power zero minimum. And... The basic ball also has the ability to put no spin, no side spin on the ball. So if we get a shot that we need two or three bars of top spin and no side spin whatsoever, we can go ahead and set our spin up with the basic ball. So it does come in handy in tournaments. We're all given a power zero side spin one ball and the Marlin. So again, we can use the Marlin to set up at either power zero maximum or power zero minimum. And if we need a shot that just needs one bar of side spin, doesn't matter what ball we switch to, as long as it has one bar of side spin, we can get our wind resistance from that type of a ball and still set up with our Marlin. So again, comes in handy a lot. If we need full side spin, we have Katana balls. Katana balls are also power two balls. So we can set up a shot at power two maximum, power two minimum with a Katana ball and still get three side spin, which a lot of our premium balls have. So we can use the Katana to set up that kind of a shot. Navigator, same deal. We got power one, we've got side spin one. So now we can set up our shot at power one, maximum or minimum, put on our one ball or side spin, and now we can switch to another type of a ball. So we've talked about the consistent landing spot. Now let's think about if we don't wanna to have to use full overpower of a shot, but we want this landing spot consistent right here at power one maximum. Now we can take our shot here, and it's gonna be this massive needle shaking overpower shot. But instead what we can do is set our initial aim, again, white ring by the rough, and now we can swap 
to this ball, make our little adjustment. And now look at our needle there. Much slower, much easier to hit perfect. So we can use this technique a whole lot in tournament play, again, to make sure our shots are consistent and as safe as possible. So let's talk real quick about that ability to save a premium ball where needed. If you take a look here with this Zenith ball, it's a power zero, wind five, side spin three ball. And I only have one left. Maybe there's a shot where I absolutely have to use it. But a lot of times we can actually manipulate how we adjust for our shot and be able to switch to another ball with the same capabilities. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here again, gonna pretend like this is a par three, but we have our quarterback. Now we know this Zenith ball can't go up any farther than this. Okay, so we can still set up at max with our Zenith. We could adjust up if we switch to a power one ball, but let's say we wanna make our exact same adjustments, three side spin, one top spin, for example. And if we adjust backwards at all, we could go ahead and take this shot with the Zenith ball or we could save the Zenith ball and go ahead and swap it out for our feather ball, which is power one, side spin three. Same type of shot, didn't affect the shot any. We can go ahead and take it and we can save the Zenith ball that we had to set up with just for that consistent landing spot opportunity. And now we don't have to use that ball. We can switch to one that we actually have. There you go, guys. Everything you need to know about the art of ball switching. I'm hoping you gave me a little bit more insight into what's going through some of these people's minds that are putting out these amazing guides for you guys. Or if you're out there and you're in a group chat for yourself and you need to find consistency among all your players, these are great tips and great tools that you can go out and use. I'm having so much fun making these videos for you guys. I hope you're enjoying them. Please, if you haven't already, one more time, hit that subscribe button for me. We're working our way to 4,000 subscribers on the channel. Stick around, guys, for more content coming up ahead. We'll catch you next time. See you out on the course.